What's up guys? Welcome to Kigali. Welcome to Rwanda. So I'm actually on a transit mm -hmm. to Doha, Qatar. And what I want to do is put us on a challenge to try and minimize yeah. $100 in 24 hours. $100 in 24 hours. Can we really do that? Are you a budget traveler? I am not a budget traveler at all. We are going to try to have as much fun as possible with a hundred dollars, alright? So if you want to visit here, this will give you an idea. Yeah, of how much things are, if it's an expensive city or not. Go! <laughs> Welcome to Rwanda, a country of a thousand hills and a country of a thousand opportunities. Traveling is not supposed to be expensive if you know where to go to and how to begin. The one thing I like about Rwanda is the options it offers to travelers. For instance, if you want a $24,000 a night room in the Gorilla's Nest or a $60 a night apartment, if you want to go mountain hiking to see the endangered Silver Park Gorillas for $1,500 or visit the Guardian Village for free, you've got options. A lot of people ask me how I afford to travel. Well, I got two rules of thumb. First is travel during off-peak seasons and number two, try to live like a local and I guarantee you 100% it's going to be super cheap and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing in 24 hours with my Kenyan friend Natalie. We will be commuting on local transportation instead of private taxis, we'll be eating at local restaurants instead of fine dining all to bring our costs down to the barest minimum. Our first destination would be the Nyangdungu Wetlands Tourism Park. The park was once a swamp but the government have been able to convert it into a national park for tourists. What was once a degraded wetland is now an education and recreation center where nature can thrive. Bikes are the fastest and cheapest way to move around Kigali. Have you been in a bike before? Um, I have to be honest, but a long time ago. So we have a lot of bikes here and they're not going to take the money we have. Let me bring out my Kenyan <laughs> negotiating skills. <laughs> This could also be a very great way for you to ex experience the city on a, on a bike. Yo, I'm having so much fun! <laughs> we paid about 3,000 Rwandan francs, which is equivalent to $2,500 thereabout. I actually enjoyed that a lot, guys. It's like so quick and easy to get around the city. Yeah, this, border border. they say if you want to experience the city yeah. in the, the cheapest way possible, try to live like a local. Yeah. If you live like a local, you will have more fun. We would hire and ride scooters along the 10 kilometer lane within the national park. Basically, to rent a, a bicycle or like a scooter, which is like an electric scooter in here, yeah. you only pay like 2,500 in Rwandan francs. But that's not too bad, guys. That's actually cheap. There's a lot more you can do here, but since we had less time, we just wanted to ride the scooters through the garden and move on to the next adventure. That was such a good experience, you know? For just $2. For just $2. And it's taken how long? Like 30, 40 minutes? Yeah. You can kill time. It's really nice. Do you think uh, Rwanda is affordable or expensive? No, yeah, Rwanda is expensive. Very expensive? <laughs> yeah. So I'm making a video and we're on a challenge to spend a hundred dollars and do the most fun that we can in 24 hours. You think that's possible? Yeah, very. The second place we visited is called Fazenda. Transportation here was about 5,000 Rwandan francs. Right here, there are a lot of things to do. Such as all them, uh, horse bike riding, archery, zipline, quad bikes, paintball. We'll be doing only the zipline and archery. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Honestly, first time ever. For me, I mean, you guys know I've done way more scary like zip line. The secret with this thing is when you release, still keep your hands straight. So what I'm gonna do now? Ah! Hey! The guy's the bad boy. Hey. You know me, I yeah. don't know. You don't know. Nigerian <laughs> hunger is working, man. He's stronger than she's, me, so she's, she's hitting it to the bush. No, it's going into the bush. You see, they have the to. They have to climb up there to go and pick her arrow. <laughs> Right. Yellow. That was good. Who got yellow? That, that's not yellow. It's yellow. yellow. It's yellow. It's yellow. <laughs> it's yellow. It's like blue. Bullseye. Are you trying to say that she got yellow? It's not yellow. It's the, yellow. The, Yo. That's you see yellow. That? That's you see yellow. That? You see that? That's yellow. yellow. That's yellow. It's yeah, yellow. she got. <laughs> she got it. She said sour. Right. Hold on, guys. See. Right. Come on, come on, come on. See. The <laughs> levels yellow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Riding, riding there. So now we're going for this one. Hey, you're so competitive. <laughs> so just allow me, have one, have one. All of that came with a price tag of 35,000 Rwandan francs for me and Natalie. 
after which we decided to check out the Kimorongo market just to experience what the local market here in Kigali looks like and also get to interact with locals. Why your name is Gorilla? Why is your name Gorilla? Mm, Ingaji. Ingaji. Alright, so the reason we actually got to the market is so we, we get to experience, like we get to see how the local people like yeah. You know, shop, yeah. leave and stuff like it's that. It's actually so. like you can get second hand things, you can get fruits, you can get <laughs> artifacts, <laughs> there's like stuff to buy. Enjoy, bro. Enjoy it too. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. enjoy. <laughs> Okay, so time for lunch. What's the cheapest thing I can have in your menu? Some mineral water. Get me some water. Yes. Coca Cola. We spent uh, 12,500, which is about $12 on this meal, which is not bad actually. Not too bad. Honestly, we have to eat, eh? In Kigari, food is like relatively affordable, not that cheap like the way maybe some people might think, and then, then not that expensive. So it's like in the middle. At Java House, we spent about 13,000 to feed ourselves and get ready for the next set of adventures. She wants to dance with you guys. Dance, can you dance with her? Yeah, Alright, let's go. Dance. Next stop is to visit the art and craft market in the city centre. Transportation fare here was about 2,000 Rwandan francs. It gets so cheap moving around Kigali. This is the perfect place to buy souvenirs for friends or something right. special for yourself. How much is this? 5,000. Yo! I give you 3,000 for this. So we that take 2, 6,000 for the 2. Huh? Alright. What is the cheapest thing here in your store I can buy as well? Those stuff you were buying. These are the cheapest thing. Yeah. So anything outside of this is expensive? More than this one. Expensive. Is it expensive here? The problem is the people who doesn't have money. Not so someone like me that don't have money, I can't enjoy? Yeah, of course. How can you enjoy your life without money? And Everything requires money. Everything requires money. To pay, to pay, to pay. Nothing for free. So if somebody wants to come to Rwanda, how much would you say the person should come with to have a good time? Uh, almost 10 million Rwanda francs. <laughs> <laughs> this guy said if you want to come here, you need 10,000 dollars. That's that's not true, guys. Yeah, this is nice, but I don't have money now. I prefer to pick this color. She wants to pick this color yeah. for 15, which is going to be 30,000 yeah. and 30 dollars are about. It's going to eat into the budget we have. So, what we're going to do is we're going to play. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Anybody that wins, we buy let's for that person, and then the other one just. Let's go. Let's yeah. do it. I'm ready. Okay, let's go. I like this color. Rock, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> okay. okay. Continue. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> So I'm going to buy it. Oh, that's Go sucks. Next, next time you come to Rwanda, you can buy it. Well, that's unfortunate, guys. Because oh. <laughs> I feel like I'd rock it more, but it's nah, okay. Nah, funny how I just learned how to play this game like so many minutes ago. Okay. See the fitting? Hey, 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 hey. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> You're checking okay. it out? How do I look? We took a stroll down the Mbonga city walk. This is a no-car zone. You can find the popular Kigali logo here, so you can stop and take pictures if you want. So far, out of the things we've done, would you f would you say it's affordable to you know be a tourist here in Kigali, especially? Um, it's fairly. It's more. It's not too pricey. Yeah. Like outrageous, but it's also not cheap. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are called Guralai. So how does it work? So basically, there's application you download. Then the yeah. moment you download, you put it on the app. There's a code over there. The radio will give you a code. Then you you scan it and then you board it. How much does it cost? Like 20, 20 cents. 20 cents? Really? That's like Yo, 200 that's very per cheap. hour. Unfortunately, we couldn't ride the Gura ride because they were closed for the day. But this is something you can try out if you find yourself in this part of Kigali. I want to explore the city while working out at the same time. <laughs> you have enough money for me to buy. You have just $100 and you're in a... How much, how much is that? 
Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. Sixty dollars. Let's 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 leave this shop. This shop doesn't belong to us right now. The next place I visited is the Genocide Memorial Museum, and I think this is a must do for everyone looking to visit Rwanda. As you know, in 1994, there was a genocide here in Rwanda against the Tutsis, and as a result of that, at least a million people lost their lives here. It's a tragic incident that happened, but some way somehow. They've been able to reserve and preserve some of this museum to tell this story so people learn about what happened. It's like a mix of emotions. It's like very somber. You don't want to read, but you feel like you have to read because of respect. And I think it's good to educate and like honor them, but it's it's tough. I'm not okay. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not okay. It's, yeah. it's a lot. So you're gonna find like areas like this where you have like the graveyard where some people were they were buried. This place is like home to some of the people that lost their loved ones. They always come here to drop flowers. You can see some of these flowers, they're like, they're fresh. The irony that we're here for such an inspiring, powerful event, being held in a nation that has seen some of the darkest times and yet this hope and inspiration radiates all over. I think like the world can learn so much from this. Rwanda is definitely an example of like healing and forgiveness and and rebuilding. You can go into the museum, you're going to see so many things. I really don't want to show it because the last time I did, my video was demonetized for showing that because when you go in there, there are like a lot of graphic image, blood, dead bodies. So I don't want to show you guys. It's sad, but also nice. You should just come and learn about really what happened. It's a free activity you can do while you're in Rwanda. If you want to drop a donation, you can support. In less than an hour, you're done with the whole tour. The sun was quickly setting and I was told that's a perfect place to watch the sun set with panoramic views of the entire city of Rwanda. It's called Eagle View. The sun has already set, so all we are left with is just the, the views. I think people here, here just most of the people coming here just for views is the first and then maybe food. Wow, you said you had experienced something here before. Yeah, when I came here the last time, it was literally a proposal. Imagine. Oh my god, now I can imagine how that looks. Like I you know. have like a very nice setup right here. Yeah, actually, with, like had, roses. Like, a flowers, yeah. Brown, and a this view. I'm not sure if the sun <laughs> set here. They also have a restaurant here. You can have a cup of coffee like we did for 7,000 Rwandan francs. You can also have dinner here as well. But because we really wanted to keep our costs low and also get to experience the local street food here and the nightlife as well, we decided to visit the most buzzing area after sundown in Kigali to squander the remaining cash and have some delicious street food. So a lot of people come in here to get like most mostly street food that is chapati, tea, coffee, Food and the stuff here is very affordable. Woo! Guinness soup! Chicken pillow! <laughs> this is Come like cook. for 10 people, my gosh. For 10 people. So we eat and we call others. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come and look at this. Yummy! <laughs> my mouth is watering. <laughs> Woo! I offer my, my sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's eat now. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm hungry. If you're in Kigali, around this time of the night, mm -hmm. So you come right here. Yeah. There's a lot of things to eat and a lot of people. The only thing missing out here is music. And vibes. Woo! Yeah. People dancing. <laughs> Everything we had here cost under 12,000 Rwandan francs, which is stupid cheap. After doing all of these activities, having the best time of our lives, feeding ourselves to the fullest, we spent about 109,000 Rwandan francs, which is about $90.08 thereabout, with $10 change. I know you might be wondering how we're able to find and book all of these activities in Rwanda. Just so I let you know, I have a travel guide I made in Rwanda. It shows the best restaurants in town, activities to do, and where to book these activities. If you want to get a car, you also have where to hire them, you know. It is basically going to show you how to plan yourself a solid itinerary right here in Rwanda without spending thousands of dollars hiring a local travel agency to do that for you, alright? So if you want to download the travel guide, look at the description section of this video. Rwanda as a travel destination offers more. The country is home to the last remaining mountain silver park gorillas. You can add that hike to your itinerary. Also, you can visit the Nyungwe forest where you get to walk on this suspending canopy bridge. Still in Nyungwe, you can also visit this waterfall. But all of these activities cost a little bit more. You have to know that. I think we're not like going to like very expensive places. Yeah. We're going to normal places where normal local people eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to, I mean, I think that's what traveling is all about. Yeah, like mean, when you get to experience the local people, yeah, you speak to them. Experience the city, get into the heart of the city. Yeah. yeah, that was really nice. So, I mean, we got, we got to live like locals, right? Yep. Uh, which is very interesting. So this marks the end of the video. Uh, but just to give you an idea, it's Kigali is very expensive. It's very, 
It's mid expensive. It's, it's mid not expensive. Yeah. It just depends on your lifestyle and yeah. how you want to move around. Yeah, yeah. Normally, I know you're not going to use the the, the bikes, right? I mean, not Don't really. Cars, Car, but, cars, um, yeah, yeah. For me, I like it. It's nice. The experience is. I get fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that this month the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for watching. The next video will probably be in Qatar. Subscribe to her channel. I'm going to link it there for you yep. and her Instagram as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.